I'm Shana Weber, and this is the Emerging Screenwriters Interview Series, and today we are here with Annika Pempel. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you, Shana? Good. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It's really lovely, and I like your, your room decor. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to start off with, let's talk first about your, your background. Mm-hmm where you're from, and kind of like how you got to where you are today. Okay, absolutely. I was uh, born in an interesting situation. I was born on the former east side of Germany, so behind the wall, uh, into communism, Um, yes, and in the middle of nowhere. So there wasn't really a city. Seven miles from the next bus stop is kind of the middle earth that I come from, and uh, I knew pretty early on that I was a little different. Yeah. Um, so I went to an arts music boarding school and then uh, studied theater directing and history and got a Fulbright scholarship that brought me over to, to the US. And here I did my master's in directing and film directing, and then I did every side job in the business. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then <laughs> like so, what? What were these side jobs? Um, I was once hired to be a mermaid. That was that was uh, <laughs> special, but it was it was one of those where you know there was this birthday party and I was supposed to swim in this pool. Uh, f- the wife hired me, uh, but the awkward part of this was it was a cloth tail, and every time I had to get out of the pool, I had to hop back to the guest room, and it was this like really wet <laughs> mermaid tail. I was trying to sack hop back. It was lovely. It was really great, special. Made me feel like a true professional. <laughs> And um, I used to also work for James Cameron. Okay. Um, Interesting. For six years. Yes. As a first, a, f- a second assistant, then a first assistant, and then a VP of production for his tech company. I feel like that's like a whole nother interview to do just about that experience <laughs> and mean, like what you've learned and like, you know what I mean? The stuff that I can't talk about. Yes, because, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the camera <laughs> off and then we'll talk about all that, the real deal stuff, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um. From that experience, though, do you think you came out of that, I guess, like, better or worse? (laughs) What do you think? Absolutely better. Um, First of all, I learned from people that are at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. You know, even if, I mean, everybody has their little quirks, right? Sure. um, I was put through a ringer that taught me so much on how to problem solve under Mm. an immense amount of pressure with problems no one would ever face um, that it doesn't shake me. You know, I go on my own sets or I try to go into a room to pitch or I talk to actors Mm -hmm. that are A-list actors that, you know, I'm trying to get onto my movie. It doesn't really make me nervous. I just can talk to pretty much anyone in any situation. Um, on a same level because I've been through worse. <laughs> right, exactly. Like this is this is amazing. Like right. I'm talking like what? I've been through the ringer. Yeah. Right. We're having a cup of coffee with like a normal table. So this is all good. We're good. Um when did you first realize or find that love of screenwriting or was it something you were always doing? You know, I I was always a storyteller, so I remember even as a kid in Germany, I used to get the neighborhood girls together, and we put on these little shows and asked for for entry fees, because (laughs) it's a business, right? Um, But telling stories, telling jokes, any and all of that, and little tiny little theater plays, I did that in middle school, and then in high school, I did my first film, so that was always kind of there, but I thought... At 22, somebody was just going to give me a million dollar script and a million dollars and an A-list actor and let me direct. That was just, you know, I also thought I was going to have a successful marriage and four kids and everything was going to (laughs) just. But um, nobody gave me the script Mm -hmm. or the million dollars. So I just kind of had to go figuring out how the business side of film finance actually works, how you start raising money correctly, how you treat... uh, sales agents, how you Mm -hmm. talk to producers, how you pitch a script, how much the script paper is worth that you present them with, why people read your script, why they don't. Um, All of this kind of stuff took me such a long time to really learn and hone in on. And I became a writer, 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 probably in my late 20s Mm -hmm. and was shit for a couple of years Mm -hmm. and just recently started becoming not quite so shit. (laughs) We're not, we're forever gonna be shit until we're like not shit. Well, like, you know, oh, it's it's a <laughs> it's a curve. It's a you're, shit curve. You're like you're great, and then I like, shit again. Yeah, great. Right? Yeah, I I feel you. Yes. Um, 
I love that aspect that you just talked about, though, about learning why right. and how people read scripts mm-hmm. and what they're pulling from it. I think that's something that when people are just a straight writer, they don't, a lot of times, you know, you read something, you're like, this is well written, but yeah. it's not going to go somewhere because right. it doesn't have these elements. So I think from from your experience and working and like learning, I think that's a huge aspect of the industry that everyone should be, you know, diving into and learning. Absolutely. Um, how would you describe your voice? What stories do you tell? Right. I'm a genre agnostic writer, so mm-hmm. I go a little bit of horror. I go thriller. Mm-hmm. I go probably not so much comedy, but my thriller um, screenplays and horror screenplays are quite funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but I probably would never write you a bridesmaids, right? Um, I do write true stories as well. I write things in the realm of spotlight, quite journalistically um, inclined. But I'm very female centric. I do write things that can get incredibly controversial. Mm-hmm. Uh, every story I've written has. Um, solid research behind it there is always an element of truth that then I mess with to tell a story in a specific way in a specific angle Um, but yeah that's that's kind of me I love how eloquently you just stated all of that was that is that something that you have honed in terms of like talking about what you write or do you just know because I think that's hard. It's a difficult thing when somebody says what do you write what's your voice it's it's sometimes very difficult to realize or you know say eloquently what it all those elements you know yes. like da, 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 da. who you are as a writer um i think it's very important and i had to hone it i had to learn it because when you go into a pitch meeting when you go to afn right and you're meeting all of these people you have to be a business person first and a writer second mm-hmm. so it really helps going through pitch prep and in pitch prep you learn okay what kind of writer are you? Right. And you have to tone it down, right? And you have to figure out, okay, this is how I can talk about it in one minute. This is how I can talk about it in three minutes. And then you don't want to be rehearsed either. You want to just practice it, but then let it all go like an actor, right? Right. And then the same happens with, with script pitches because an elevator pitch is incredibly important, but you also have to know who you have in front of you. If you have a sales agent in front of you, you're probably not gonna wanna tell your logline first. You're gonna wanna tell him, you know what? I already have this producer who did this Mm -hmm. attached and we're currently in talks with so-and-so. And And then they're gonna lend you their ear in order to talk about a possible logline. And you're gonna wanna start with the genre first. Because if you know you have a sales agent that specifies in one specific genre, which you should know as a writer, that is your job, Mm -hmm. then you can hook them with that second. And then they're gonna read your script. Amazing. I feel like I should, you should just do like a master class of your own. <laughs> I'm like, dude, so tell me more. That's how I feel. Like, tell, tell me more about this process. I love it. Um, okay, so let's kind of switch gears. Yeah. Tell me um, about how you were introduced to ISA, um, how, how they have helped you, mm-hmm. what you've learned through that, and then, and then let's talk about where you're going. Like, right. what are your goals What do you want to be doing? Big goals, small goals this year, five years, all that. Sure. Um, ISA, uh, I've met a couple of years ago uh, through a small script of mine called Odium Mm -hmm. in 2018, I believe it was. Wow, five years ago. (gasps) And uh, they were really cool. We did this little reading in um, formerly Beecher's Madhouse, if you know the Roosevelt Mm -hmm. Hotel, that little theater down there Mm -hmm. that is sadly underused it needs to be used better it for the right gorgeous. stuff i love that place. was it for the table read my screenplay mm-hmm. you want table read my screenplay? okay yes yeah. yes yes for feature and that little script of course like every film like i feel like each one falls apart at least once mm-hmm. especially if it's a feature this one's fallen apart twice but now i have wonderful producers attached i have uh stephanie caleb who did cake and yellow birds attached and we have a sales agent and we have a financier so things are moving in the right direction finally after i can't tell you how many rewrites and being told by every party we have these notes it has to go into this genre more the deck has to go into this genre Mm -hmm. more it has to look more like this and then you kind of have to decide as a writer okay how much of me can become a business person and how much Mm -hmm. of me stays true to the story. Can I do both? Where can I connect those two? Right. And that's been quite a journey. And ISA has helped me, um, through the entire process. I've stayed in touch with, uh, with Craig and with the girls really those five years. Um, 
and through some of the submissions to some of the some of the gigs, um, I've met really cool producers as well. I'm in talks with someone right now to do a rewrite for them, actually, as a job for hire, which I also love. So they've been part of my journey, and not every script competition is. I've had amazing ones. Mm -hmm. um, the Nickel Fellowship was great. They have some awesome things that came from that. Um, outstanding screenplays, similar. Um, there are some that are really lovely. And then there has been a couple when it's more about them than the writers, and that's mm -hmm. really unfortunate. But ISA has always proven for the last five years that it's writers first, and I think that's gold. Amazing. Um, I, I want to touch on what you just said about receiving notes from different entities entities yes how do you personally decide what you're going to um, what you're going to accept as mm -hmm. a note and change versus what you're sticking to and not budging on well there are two sides to this right mm -hmm. so you have um, the artistic side but in the artistic side studying directing and having been an actor for quite some time I go by motivation. Is everything motivated, right? I go script arc and I go structure first and then within the scene, if I have a note that's like, okay, we need a little bit more thriller. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, that's really a nothing note. But you have to be like, okay, how can I motivate that thing that is so genre specific that will help me sell it over here in the business side, the second part of this, mm -hmm. how can I motivate that? And where can I motivate that without being gimmicky? Is there a way to do it? Um, with Odium specifically, it's a psychological thriller. It was mm -hmm. actually quite easy. You put that in the shot design. And mm -hmm. since I'm going to be sitting there in the director's chair, there's an easy way of writing a couple of things into the script that don't sound like shots. But when you read them, you're like, oh my God, it's so visual. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So you kind of just use the other side of this and you, you motivate it into your scenes. You weave it through oh. so that then your sales mm -hmm. agent can go like, oh my God, it's so much scarier. Right. Right. Yeah. I felt that. Yeah. I can see it. Exactly. I can, I can picture it. And it doesn't have to be jump scares. It doesn't yeah. have to be budging on your characters. It doesn't have to be um, something that your story is not. You just also have to think from their perspective. I always like putting myself into their shoes and seeing, okay, they need to sell this. They're putting up so much money up front. They're putting themselves at risk for you, mm -hmm. for a story that they believe in. And they have to believe in it. So you also have to figure out, okay, as a business person, how much can I give on that table until I'm Sorkin? <laughs> right? <laughs> how, much, how much can I give on that table so yeah. that they feel like I'm a good teammate? Sure. Yeah. That's really kind of it. All right. That's, I mean, great advice, I think. Um, I love that little tidbit about kind of hiding the shot in the genius. Um, what are your goals? What are what are you doing right now? Where do you see yourself in a year, five yeah. years? And then what's your big dream? What's your big picture? You know, the big picture is hard because I feel like that always has to move forward. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're getting, you're getting stuck. Like, my big picture has moved yeah so many times like at, at 18 i wanted to get into a good film school right mm -hmm. that was the big picture sure. and had i just reached that and stopped growing then that would have been very very sad um so for me last year i published a novel that's also the screenplay for it is also being published and sold on amazon um that's one of my goals to get that with the right people to have that become its own little world mm -hmm. um I do want Odie, my little one, to, to finally turn into my first directorial feature. Mm -hmm. um, I have another one that's very journalistic that is looking for a home right now that also is a, a real goal of mine, um, not to direct, but to get to the right person to direct and to sure. attach the right people. It has serious authenticity to it and a serious heart, but it is very political. Mm -hmm. So it's a bee's nest of controversy. <laughs> um, and uh, hard to sell. Um, my goal is this year to do the two adaptations that I'm hired to write and also to do my next script that somehow feels like it's the most difficult I've been writing since um, I started because it has the danger of, of being quite convoluted. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have to focus it sure. and stick to the heart of it while also bringing some of the elements in because it's a bit genre bending. Mm -hmm. um, and then what other goals do I have? I would love to get a little bit into commercials. That's been a really hard mm -hmm. step. 
because it's a different door directing commercials yes. okay that'd be that'd be lovely um because it teaches you so much about a specific short form and about yeah. the sales aspect of things that i feel like i can really use on the feature side mm-hmm. i would love that um and then to just continue freaking having fun with this because oh good that's know. a good goal yeah i think yeah. so I think it is. Yeah, you can't just be like, no. You have to have fun or else right. what's the point? Right. And I love being on set. So for me, being on set is like summer camp. Yeah. And that's awesome. I miss it. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go. Um, what advice would you give your younger self? Continue honing those relationships and, you know, making sure you take care of them over the years. Because mm. what's been happening in the last couple of years is that I could just email a person who's been big in the industry and be like, hey, I'm here, this is where I'm at, I'm at this agency, I'm with this manager, this is the project, this is the pieces, can you get this to your client? I'd love to have her for A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And they've been answering, and they've been very receptive. So my younger self did a couple things right, but also I used to have this tendency of throwing out the baby with the bathwater, if that makes sense, okay. right? Being like, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, cool, awesome. Totally different direction. And I okay, think I mm-hmm. that as a young screenwriter, as a young actor, as a young artist of any sort, try to, once in a while, with kindness and with care, check in with the people that you meet and continue having them in your circle with decency. Don't over bear Mm -hmm. at any point just be a human being right and don't try to sell them when you're not ready to sell something Mm -hmm. ever ever do not burn finance do not jump the gun yeah do not that either yeah don't pitch something that's not ready do not ever burn a financier knowing that you're going to burn them you're going Mm -hmm. to burn them for every other movie for every other artist that's a no-no um don't lie as in don't say you have somebody attached or you're in talks to, with somebody when you're not right that's a giant no-no and i hear it all the time um do the work do the pitch prep for each script that you think is ready go get it through a service go get another set of notes and then mm. redo the notes before you send it out before you send a query letter before you try to pitch to a manager to an agent because mm-hmm. Trust me, even a year later, I still find a couple of um, little things in a script where I'm like, oh, I can't spell. I still cannot spell. It's so sad. (laughs) But yeah, that, do the work. Do the work. Yeah. Right. We'll wrap it up with some fun questions. Yeah. Um, Who are your, who are your heroes and why? Who are my heroes? They differ, actually, for specific different things. I mean, I do have to mention James. James Cameron um, is one of the best shot designers there is, and I also know how he works. Um, And I've seen that under pressure. And there is a way to break under pressure, and there is a way to go with it and to flow with it and to make something really beautiful out of it. And he's been a man at the top of his game for how many years? It's astounding. And that definitely is not on I mean clearly for him it's been reachable but that is that is something that I absolutely admire Mm -hmm. I also really like uh writers like Phoebe Phoebe Waller Bridge right Mm -hmm. where you have this wonderful thing where you wrap people in with comedy as she says and then punch Mm -hmm. them in the gut with drama yeah um and that is something that I adore I think Mm -hmm. we need to bend genres a little bit more right every thriller needs to make you laugh once in a while and every drama for crying out loud you can't ball your eyes eyes out for two hours straight it's just you won't have any tears left you need to do something else so that she's done gorgeously and we need more of that for sure and i like writers that you know get out of their wheelhouse that don't just have a one-trick pony that write Mm -hmm. different things Mm -hmm. like if it's all the same genre i feel like it shows a little bit of a level of fear right if you just stick right. to that one thing that you know so well, <sighs> yeah, branch out. Go try something new. Even if you fail, it doesn't matter. Go yeah. write a different genre. Yeah, Pull you might something be out surprised, of it. right? You right. might be surprised of what comes right. out that you right. can bend. Exactly. The um, who? Uh, what are you, What are you watching right now? What shows are you loving, or movies are you loving? I'm currently watching all the award films. Mm-hmm. Um, yesterday, I watched uh, All Quiet on the Western Front because it's a German film and it got nominated for uh-huh. so many Oscars. Right. I love the fact 
that it's not just nominated in Best Foreign. Mm -hmm. That makes me very, very happy. Mm -hmm. um, it's nominated in so many categories, and I watched it and and love the fact that Daniel Brühl is an executive producer, right? An actor that American audiences know very well, and they're very um, familiar with his face. Uh, it's a gorgeous piece of work with cinematography to die for, mm. and I really want to steal that colorist. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I'm 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 ready to see it. I mean, I read the book back okay. in the day, and yeah. it's it's a heavy movie. Yeah. Um, but it's a very important piece, and I think we need to watch things like that, probably only once, to be honest. But sure, <laughs> all of us need to need to watch it, and it's a gorgeous piece of work. Um, I also watched uh, the menu just mm -hmm. recently and I love it mm -hmm. because the twists and turns are something yeah. I can relate to that's something totally, I right? love writing yeah um, loved it I love Ralph Fiennes please <laughs> be in more stuff um, yeah it was a lot of fun and I used to side job in a kitchen so I can relate oh. I'm like oh that's uh, that's so funny <laughs> I feel like it's right I know when I sidebar but when I read the book for Devil Wears Prada and I was an assistant yep. I, I was like sweating right I was PTSD. sweating yes I was like reading and I'm like I'm, why do I have so much anxiety about it but it's like it's the same it. thing like you know that you're like oh my god the copy oh, like all the no. things so I can relate to that and all you want to do is just throw your phone in the freaking fountain and you're like nope I'm done but yeah totally. it's it's that and what else am I watching um I loved Dope Sick this mm -hmm. year love that show brilliant writing brilliant acting can't get enough of it right um the great still mm -hmm. to this day undervalued um love that show very very much yeah yes okay good and then if you had if you had three wishes what would they be <sighs> probably not all career but let's stick to career wishes with this anything anything <gasps> yes. anything not just career not anything anything well <laughs> probably so cheesy and sappy but just health for you mm -hmm. know family and friends and everybody in my circle that i deeply care about so that we all have another 150 years to do right. this crazy fun life together um something very impossible especially for women i wish that every woman had the choice to do this <gasps> ambitious thing where they can have both they can have a family and they can have a career and one doesn't affect the other or doesn't get talked about badly or they're being chastised for one or the other or possibly not doing it right Amen that would be that. wish two <laughs> <laughs> and probably wish three that the times are getting a little bit lighter and we don't all have to think about whether or not we can buy eggs yeah the next morning all right well i think we ran the gamut from james cameron to eggs so that's I, the same category right it's i really think that chapter. we nailed this interview ah, I and think I think so, too. Good. so thank you so much for being here thank you for having me <laughs>